007. It's going to Moab. 465 dead to 2000's package. I believe we might have our buy run. Hi everybody, it's Greg from FTI. We're back to do another How It's Made video for you, the consumer, to help you understand these transmissions better. We're trying to do one of these a week for you. This week we're going to talk about modifying your power glide pump, turning it into a race application pump from a factory power glide pump. We're also going to show you today what we do with these pumps as far as the CNC machining process and so forth when we make an oversized gear pump. We're also going to go over what you can do to a stock pump if you're going to put new gears in it, how to check to make sure your pump is good. Okay, we're going to skip some of the uh, the basics here as far as like taking the pump out of the transmission. We already know we know how to do that. Taking it apart. So let's show you what you're going to look for. We have some pumps here already taken apart on the bench for you. Let's uh, let's take a look right here at this stator half. This would be the stator side of the pump. Now, it comes factory with a tube already in it. We've already mashed the tube out. You can simply do this in the shop press. You flip it over on the back side use a driver and push the tube out. We push all the tubes out and put a new 4340 hardened stator tube in it with hardened splines so you don't tear up the original style stator tube. Now once you get this out this is where your modification process is going to begin. Now let me back up and tell you too you don't have to push the tube out. We do it in all our pumps. We put new tubes in all our pumps. Uh, but it's not really necessary. We do try to do it in every one of them. We want, when you get a product we want it to be brand new. Uh, if you're modifying a stock pump, you'll be fine. Once you get the tube out, we need to look at the at the pump, even if you don't push the tube, and notice how the pump gear is worn down into this pump right here real bad. It's just like an oil pump in an engine. If it's got a groove that you can even remotely feel with your finger, you're going to have an issue with pump volume and pump pressure. So once you have it here at this point, this one's going to go get CNC machined. If you have a good stator side, you won't you won't have to machine it most people don't have a CNC at home so um, we'll come back to this and show you what happens at what it looks like after it's machined but we're going to use this for the time point to show you what you need to look at and what you need to drill this hole comes in diff many different sizes in these power glides we drill every one of them to 250 thousandths this is to make sure that every pump leads here exactly the same this is the intersect hole that goes in and intersects to this this bead hole now what you don't want to do is drill through this hole and drill all the way into the stator tube of the transmission. We use a long quarter inch drill like this. That way if you do have a tube in here, you can still get down next to the tube. You want to drill this hole to the bottoms here as such. Then you're going to come in through this side hole and intersect. You're going to drill this all the way down and make sure that you intersect into this hole. That ensures that both holes are quarter inch. At the same time, you want to come around the, the two legs, I call these legs, facing you. The hole at 11 o'clock has got to protrude into the stator tube. See the pick coming through? You have to make sure that protrudes into the stator tube. Now, these holes we've seen many different sizes as well. Here we go again. We just take and drill that hole all the way through with a quarter inch drill bit. All the way through to the center of the tube. Now, if you have a tube in it, uh, in the pump, you don't have to drill through the tube. As long as the pick goes through and, and it protrudes through the tube, you're fine. If you take one of these pumps that we've already assembled here, I can show you this pick goes all the way through and drops into the tube, as you can see here, if you can get a close-up on that. That's how you know your tubes installed properly. We'll go ahead and cover that right now. When you install your new tube, you'll notice there's several holes in the bottom of it. You have to position this tube appropriately that the highest hole goes to the 11 o'clock position. So what you do here is same deal. You put your feet towards you when you press the tube in. You, you have to have a fixture to press this. Otherwise you can't press on the outside of the pump. It'll bend it and break it. It has to press against the bearing surface on the bottom. You're going to press this tube in 
with a pick sitting in the hole and then once the pick falls through that's the depth that the tube needs to be into the pump you have to make sure that hole lines up if you do not align that hole converter charge circuit oil will suffer this train is going to do all kinds of crazy things okay we'll come back to the finished finished piece here in a minute um, once you get all these holes drilled remember to intersect this one this one goes through We'll take the drill bit and we'll run through these three feed holes as well. One, two, and three. Make sure you note the location of those. And the reason why we do that is they get crud in them and so forth, and we want to keep a consistent hole size throughout the entire pump. This is all for lubrication and converter charge circuit. Now, on the back side of the pump, right here, there's a valve, and it has a roll pin that travels all the way through. These roll pins are prone to break. There's been many ways to fix these over time. People have put a larger roll pin, a solid roll pin, uh, and, and I've even seen those break and fall out. We've devised a way of doing it that it can never break. So what I want you to do here is knock that roll pin out. There's going to be a little valve come out. Looks like this. It's called a primer valve. It's going to come out and it's going to have a spring on the back side of it. What we do with them is once we take that out of there, we're going to take a quarter inch pipe tap and we're going to tap this hole. We're going to put that on an impact or, or tap driver and we're going to drive it and tap that hole. Now once that hole's tapped, this pump side is ready to go be machined. In your situation, if you're not machining it, you need to make sure you take a blow gun and blow through every single orifice when you clean it. There's going to be chips from the tap and the drilling inside this pump and trapped behind the stator tube in these holes. So we want to make sure we get all that out of there. We don't want to take all the time we put into this pump and feed trash through it. So now this piece is ready to basically go be machined. Okay, one more, a couple more things I'd really like to show you. You're going to run into different variations of these pumps when you take them apart, and there's some things that need to be addressed with all of them. Uh, this right here is a cooler bypass check valve. So if your cooler plugs, this valve goes down and allows cooler oil to flow through. Many builders block that. Uh, you could do that. That's fine. This one right here has been drilled and tapped. I don't. You can see it if you get a close-up right there, and it has a set screw put in it. At that point, you can take the check valve out. Now it, the fluid has to go through the cooler. But if your cooler plugs, you can blow a line off a race car or whatever. Uh, we've done them several different ways. We generally try to leave the cooler bypass valve in it. So if something does happen, a cooler line collapses, a cooler plugs, A, it's not going to blow a line off, and B, you're still going to get lubrication oil back to the transmission. When the fluid leaves the converter, it goes to the cooler at that point. comes back as returned as lubrication oil. So if the cooler plugs and you don't have the bypass valve, you're not getting any lubrication oil to your $1,000 planetary in the back of the transmission. So we generally leave the cooler bypass valve. We make sure they're good and clean. A couple things, other things you're gonna notice in a pump, different variations in these pumps. Um, as you can see, this pump right here has got another, we have installed a pipe plug in the back back here. You see this hole's drilled through. Not all these pumps have it drilled through such as this one does not have it this one does if this hole's drilled through there many times they'll have a a another check valve type system in there and you'll see flat disc type you'll see them with a with a ball just like this one at that point come through the back side with a punch knock that ball system out that's a blow-off ball install a 9 16 cut plug lock tight it and drive it to the bottom of the board that keeps you from having any, any leaks in your cooler circuit as well. This will affect converter charge oil if you leave that, that check valve there. This is all part of making consistency in your pump. That's going to pretty much wrap up the stator side bef before we start assembling it. This, this is ready to go and be cleaned at that point. Obviously, this one has to be machined. But your, your stator side will be ready to be machined or cleaned and then, and then assembled back together. Uh, while we're still in the inspection process and getting your pump ready to go, Let's look at a bad pump body, just so you can see. Just like an oil pump in your engine, this pump body, the gear has scored both surfaces, here and here, and inside the crescent as well. Once these get scored up, they're no good. They need to be machined and have an oversized gear put in it. As long as all your surfaces here are good, you can replace the gears with an aftermarket set of gears, take the factory garbage out, and put an aftermarket set of gears in this pump body. If it looks like this, it needs to be machined, or you need to grab another pump core to work with. We'll take this pump core, it'll, it'll get cleaned, and it'll go off to the CNC machine and be machined. And I'll bring out the CNC parts here in a minute and show you how we put it back together. 
So while we're still here on this side, let's assume that you have a good pump body such as this one that is not scored up. As you can see, it's good and clean top and bottom. You can go, okay, I'm just supposed to feel it and figure it out? No, we need to mic these things. Virtually everybody's gonna have a feeler gauge at home. We're looking two and a half to four and a half thou. The high limit is six thou on the outside of the gear. So you've received your new set of gears. One side has a bevel on the inside, the other side does not. You want to put your bevel down. Also look, you can look on the outside of the gears as well. Some of them have it on both sides. If it has a bevel on both sides of this gear, it can go either way. The interior gear, not so. The interior gear has to go a certain way. If you put it in backwards, you're going to break the, 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 the drive, 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 blank, drive tangs off of it, and then you're going to be upset that you got a broke pump. Now, we have this gear in here. Let's take our feeler gauge and let's stick it down the outside of that gear. This is a 4 thousandths gauge right here. And as you can see, just like adjusting valve lash, it should have good drag against it. If you go up in size in your feeler gauge, so let's say 6 thousandths, and it fits real sloppy, then chances are your pump is just about wore out. See, I can barely get a 6 in there. It's very, very tight. This pump has got one more run in it. If it's over 6 now, don't run the pump body. Now the other thing you need to check is the height of the gear to the pump body itself. We use a depth mic to do this. First of all, you have to make sure your mic is zeroed out. Put on a flat surface, which this pump right here is flat, and make sure your, your mic reads zero as such. Now you can bring it over here and put it on the gear and see how far in the hole it is. You want the gear between a half a thou and two thou in the hole. This one's right at a half thou. So this is perfect. This pump still can be run. You can put a new set of gears in it and get another, another cycle out of this pump before it's having to be machined. Once you do this and make sure that your gears are good, obviously clean your entire pump, install a new bushing in here as you've already installed a new bushing in this one, and put your new seal and we paint it all up. Uh, this would be rerunning a stock type pump in a, in a rebuild situation where you don't need to purchase a new pump. Your pump still has more life in it, so therefore you don't have to buy a new one at that point. Uh, check your gear clearance. Check your overall height. Make sure you install this inner gear properly. Let's go over that. There's a step in the gear on this side right here. There is no step in the gear on this side. The step goes towards the torque converter. That's what helps get the converter in when you put it in the car to get it to drive into the gear. Always got to do that. Make sure it goes towards the front side of the pump. When you assemble this pump, do not put it together dry. Make sure you oil it down real good. Simple transmission fluid's fine. Just oil it up. Put your gears in there. You don't want to crank it dry. If you crank it dry, it's going to mar the gear. Put a little gear oil on the top. Now you're ready to install your stator half. We're going to get back to that in a few minutes. This, is, this would be a factory rebuild pump with a new set of gears. These parts have already come back from the CNC. I already have pressed my stator tube in to this pump. As you can see, we CNC this surface. We CNC the surface where it sits on the gasket. And you also notice that we've cut this surface down here as well. This is where the factory washer would ride on the back of the pump. Whenever you buy a pump from FTI, it's going to come with a new bearing here. That way when the load is against it, it's not against the washer, you have a bearing gets rid of a lot of drag and a lot of heat out of the inside of the unit. The first thing that gets machined is the bearing side and the gasket side. All these parts have got to be parallel to each other. So once it's machined, it goes back over the fixture in the middle, gets, gets set on here, clamped, and it machines this side parallel to everything else. That way everything runs true. The stator tube's on the center, it's co-centric, and everything is flat and square to each other. This is where the money comes involved in, in, in purchasing an aftermarket pump or a pump that's been set up for racing that's gone through the process of CNC machining. We're gonna to go to the other side of the pump here in a minute. Everything's been drilled, everything's been cleaned. We already got our tube pressed in there. As we showed you before, the pit goes in, goes straight through, protrudes into the tube. We're good there. Uh, this one has the, the pipe block in it. Now the primer valve that we took out earlier, um, that I had you tap the hole. If we leave that hole empty, we're not gonna have any line pressure whatsoever. As the engine turns the pump gear, suction is here, pressure goes out here and comes out and feeds the transmission. So if you have a big hole right here, all your pump pressure is going out the side of the pump and not going to the transmission. We have the primer valve that we take out. Now I want you to take the spring, throw it away. We don't need that anymore. This valve came out with the pocket sticking outward. 
I want you to put it in backwards where the, the little nipple on the valve is sticking out. You're simply going to put this down inside here, push it all the way down, take your quarter inch pipe plug, and we're going to screw the quarter inch pipe plug in there. If you'll look into the hole where the roll pin was, make sure the pipe plug is in there far enough that it blocks this hole. We want to make sure that this hole is blocked with the threads of the pipe plug. Now you have no way of breaking that pin or it coming out. Once it's installed, it should look like this right here. And notice the valve doesn't move. We've eliminated the primer valve. We don't need the primer valve. Eliminated. It. It's done. It's gone. This side is now ready for assembly. So let's go to our CNC machine. Some people call these the crescent. Some call the gear side of the pump. We call this the pump body. Now, if you'll look inside this pump body, we've opened this diameter up. We machine this surface. We machine the surface where it touches the case, again, so that everything is parallel and flat to each other. We've already installed a new bushing and a new seal. This surface is deeper and larger diameter. Now, one of the other things we do, if you notice, there's a radius on the front of this crescent right here, versus a stock type pump does not have a radius on that crescent. And the reason why we do that is we don't want that gear to catch that like that, just like that. If it catches the front side of that radius, it will blow, blow the gear up if it catches that corner. So we radius it. The other thing it does, it keeps the fluid from cavitating as it's being sucked up and rolled around there. Whenever there's a sharp edge, just like a step hole in a boat, it aerates the fluid. It gets the aeration out of the, out of the fluid. Now, this pump's ready for assembly. We're gonna go through the same process. Again, bevel on the gear goes down. These are oversized gears. If you purchase oversized gears from me, the pump has to be machined. They will not fit in a stock pump. Same deal, we're gonna come along here, we're gonna check our, our overall gear clearance. We already know the mic is on zero. We're gonna come here and check it. This one's right at one thousandths, that's perfect. Then we're gonna go back to our feeler gauge. <clears throat> this one should be perfectly four thousandths. We hold it down to about three tenths of a thou on a CNC machine. This, this is what makes a quality pump. Put your feeler gauge in it, she's perfect. We are spot on. Now, back to the inner gear. Bevel goes where? Bevel goes towards the torque converter. So it's gonna go to the front side of the torque converter. Okay, now, once all this is ready to go, we have our stator side, we have our primer valve installed, all the holes drilled, it's clean, the stator tube's in, we're ready to assemble this pump. Now there's several ways to, to line your pump up. You can't just stick the two halves together and bolt it up because it's not going to be straight. Uh, we use uh, a factory case to align them with. You can also lose a, use a pump alignment band, such as this right here, which is basically a great big hose clamp where you put the two halves together, you tighten the band down on the pump, and then you, and then you torque, torque your pump together. And I, we're going to use an inch pounds torque wrench for this. We're going to torque them at 144 inch pounds. So let's go ahead and get the fixture here and let's, let's set it together. Like I said, we use power glide case. We have an alignment stud here. This is to align the two halves. Set it down in the case, make sure it's flat. Got to oil her up. Remember, no dry pump. Nobody wants it dry. Got to have her lubed up. Make sure the bevel goes where? Down. I am going to keep reiterating this. If you put this gear in backwards, you're going to be calling me and going, hey, my pump gear's broken. Pump gear goes down. Make sure everything turns good. It is. It's free. It's smooth. Now we're going to install the stator half of the pump. Again, make sure everything's there. Make sure your pipe plug's in. Look at your ring lands. That's something I should have told you earlier. Make sure your ring lands aren't tore up or where your bushing rides is good. If it's no good, you need to replace your pump. Look for your two feet, just like we talked about. We got two feet on the, the pump body, two feet on the stator. That, that is your alignment hole. Put it right down in there. As you can see, it'll move a little bit. That's what we put the peg for. We put it on center and we, we bolt it together. Now, once you, you put these bolts in here, we're gonna torque these to 144 inch pounds. Make sure you either use the factory bolt or a grade eight bolt replacement. You don't wanna use a grade five bolt here there's a lot of pressure gets made inside this pump. It's regulated by the valve body. We don't want you to have a problem with the pump stretching and breaking the bolts. Okay, 
Once we have these bolt pump bolts torqued down to 144 inch pounds, a couple more things we still need to do before this pump's ready to go on the transmission. Now, you're going to want to use a Teflon sealing ring on the back of your pump stator here. There's many different Teflon sealing rings. There's a narrow sealing ring. There's a wide sealing ring. We typically run the wider rings. Uh, if we find that the ring doesn't fit groove good in the, in the ring groove, that the ring groove is a little tight, then we'll go to the narrower ring. Definitely run Teflon rings. Do not run the steel rings in a race application. I don't want you to do that. Um, before you put your rings on, the bearing that comes with our pump from FTI, uh, you're going to want to put this on first, otherwise you're going to mess your rings up. And it just simply goes down and presses down flat. Now, you can purchase this bearing separately and put it on a stock pump, but you're going to have to put it in a lathe. And you got to knock off 90 thousandths of material to put that bearing on there. Once that's on, you can install your rings. I'll close them up a little bit. They are Teflon just to give them a little memory. And when you overlap the ring, you want to make sure that the butt ends overlap properly. If you do it like this, that is no good. They have to overlap just like that. That's something you want to be real careful of and make sure. It doesn't hurt to put a little Vaseline or transmission gel there. We use transmission gel. Uh, it's an assembly lube to help hold the rings. And then that, last but not least, put your new pump o-ring on there. Uh, it just simply goes in the groove around the outside of the pump. One other thing that I'd like to see you do, once you get the pump bolted together, is we want to make sure that the bushing fits the hub of the torque converter and that the gears spin. This will reiterate that you got it clean and there's no trash in those gears. You have got to be clean putting this pump together. Uh, we have a torque converter hub and a bolt welded to it for a handle. Uh, not everybody's going to have one of these in their toolbox, but you can simply put it down on top of your torque converter and spin it. Make sure that it goes through the seal properly. Make sure that the pump gear rotates like it's supposed to. It should be free and smooth. If it has a catch in it, eh, 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 then chances are you have got a piece of trash from where you drilled the pump in, in, inside your gears. Uh, we want to make sure that it's good and smooth when you turn it. Now, when you purchase a pump that's been CNC machined by us here at FTI, it's going to come ready to stall in the unit minus the O-ring and the sealing rings. Those are going to come in your, your overhaul kit, which we sell also as well. Um, they come in that kit, but it will go ahead and have a bearing on it. It will already be bolted together, aligned, torqued. You won't have to measure anything. It's ready to go in the unit. Put your sealing ring, put your O-ring on, and drop it in a hole, and you'll be good to go. If you're ready to install this pump in your transmission, put a little bit of lube here, a little bit of lube on your bearing and your sealing rings, and on your O-ring on the outside, and there you have it. That's how you modify a pump for use in a race type power glide. This is using a factory casting. We do offer aftermarket castings, billet pumps, billet aluminum pumps, seven bolt aftermarket castings with bolt in stator tubes. This pump would be what you would use in your standard sportsman class racing. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.